Hello everybody and welcome to your Chem 113 review on the definition of common terms. My name is Jason and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. So this slide is all about just defining some common terms. These terms we're probably going to use in later videos. So we're trying to make sure we're all on the same page and we understand what each of these terms exactly mean. So the first one we're going to talk about is matter. So what is matter? Matter is anything um, that has mass and occupies a space. These are the two important pieces of matter. It has to have mass and it has to occupy space. So mostly anything you can think of in the entire world is probably an example of matter. So examples of matter would include like a brick wall. Oops. Things like a brick wall. Or, or just human beings. Or the sun. Or, or the air we breathe. Or anything like that. Anything that has mass and occupies space. It doesn't even have to have like a lot of mass. Like air doesn't have a lot of mass when compared to a human being, right? But it still has mass. Things that are examples of, of that aren't matter would be something like light, right? Because photons don't necessarily have mass or, or sound waves, things like that. Things that don't have mass or that don't occupy any space, that don't have any like physical dimensions to them. Right. Cool, so that's matter. Okay, next up we have elements. So if you're familiar with the periodic table, Everything on the periodic table is an example of an element. Go ahead and erase this. So an element, they're pretty much the basic substances that make up matter. That make up matter. So when we think of the air that we breathe, for instance, so when we think of air, air, as I mentioned earlier, air is an example of matter. Well, what is air composed of? Well, it's composed of some nitrogen. It's mostly nitrogen, the air that we breathe at least. Some oxygen, probably some hydrogen in there. All of these are examples of elements. So if you were to take air and you were to look at it under a tiny, tiny microscope, you would see all of these little things and all of those little things are elements, okay? So those are what elements are. They're these substances that make up all the matter in the universe. And again, we have them all organized on the periodic table. So anything you can think of in the whole world can usually be broken down into one of those elements that we have. There's some things crazy out there in the galaxy that, that probably exist of elements that we don't yet have names for. But um, pretty much everything that we have on Earth, you can break down into the elements that we have on the periodic table. Okay, atoms. Atom, these are like the building blocks of matter. So what exactly is the difference here? Well, you can have an element. Think of the element gold, for instance. That is an element. So if you have a block of solid gold, that's you have an elemental gold. It's just pure gold. But if you were to look at that gold under a microscope, you'd see a bunch of tiny little things. Those tiny little things are gold atoms. Okay. So the element gold is sort of just like a, a name for the general existence of this substance. This substance is gold. But the tiny little pieces that make up that substance, that's what the atoms are. So if you have a bunch of gold atoms all arranged together, that makes up gold. Okay. So it's sort of an arbitrary line that's drawn between element and atom. Think of atoms as like the actual physical things that make up the elements. And the elements are just the general name for the, the group of all of those atoms. Okay, That's what an atom is. So again, if you were to like zoom in on a piece of gold, you would see a bunch of gold atoms. So like, here's like a gold block, for instance. Pure gold. And then if we were to like look at a tiny little piece under an electron microscope, we'd see a bunch of little, bunch of little things here. And each of those tiny little things is a gold atom. 
So that's what an atom is. And then lastly, we have a molecule. So a molecule, let's go ahead and erase all of this, is it's pretty much a collection of atoms of, um, to be specific, a collection of different atoms, bonded different atoms, bonded covalently. And we will, in future videos, discuss exactly what covalently means. But for the most part, just think of them as, as if you have two different types of atoms, they're probably combined into a molecule, okay? So for instance, um, H2O, that's a very common molecule, is water, right? And what it means is we have, we have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. You may have seen it before, right? It looks like, um, it looks like this. This is what H2O looks like. You have your two hydrogen atoms and you have your oxygen atom and they're, and they're bonded together. Okay, and this bond is called a covalent bond. Not all bonds are covalent, um, but in this case, it is a covalent bond. Okay. Cool. Let me go ahead and erase all this. So as I mentioned earlier, I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. If you want more information about the free resources we offer on all four campuses and online, please go ahead and check out tutoring.asu.edu. Uh, if you want to see more resources like this that go over specific concepts in your course, or maybe you want to see what upcoming review sessions we have for your course, go ahead and click on that link below. Uh, thank you all again for joining me, and have a fantastic day.